What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Man Card Podcast. We are very excited for you to join us this very special episode. And this one isn't just sep- this one isn't just special because of who we have on. This one is special, uh, especially special, because of the timing of the show. So, honey, uh, obviously, this is my wife, everybody who doesn't know. Hello. What is going on right now as we speak? We are currently in South Georgia in a tiny home on a 100-acre property for my birthday. Yes. It is Ellie and my birthday month. This is Ellie's birthday weekend. And so it struck me a couple weeks ago. I was like, you know what? I want to do something special for my wife's weekend for her birthday. So So I I texted you. I remember texting you. I was in store and Mm -hmm. I texted you. I was like, hey, what are we doing, you know, the 15th, 16th, 17th? And I was like, nothing so far. Yeah, we don't have plans. And so I was like, okay, well, here here are our plans. I found this cute tiny home. The cutest tiny home ever. Yeah, cutest. I think it's uh, Haven underscore tiny house. Uh, Look Mm -hmm. them up on Instagram. Cutest freaking thing ever. It's a great property, hiking trails. It has everything you need. Yeah, literally everything. So we, yes. we couldn't be happier with our experience here. It's but so peaceful. Too. So peaceful. So peaceful. Well, so I was actually mentioning earlier, like sometimes you feel like you need a vacation from your vacation. Yes. Almost sometimes. And I have not had that feeling Mm-mm. on this trip at all. No. It's like it's just so relaxing. So relaxing. And it's, a, it's completely off the grid. Yep. So this has like... Uh, like solar panels, mm-hmm. the battery battery bank, um, and everything's off the grid. So you, it's like, like, hey, look, we're here making an impact. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. That's not the reason why, but it's it's really cool to see. Like, you know, this could be an option for us if we wanted to to live in a tiny house. Yeah, it's very cute. Yeah, would definitely recommend Airbnb for trying stuff out. Like, if you yes. want to live in a certain area. Airbnb in that area mm-hmm. or like if you want to live in a certain type of house Airbnb it see if you like it um, they got all different types of stuff on there but this experience has been amazing it really has and it's run by this uh, sweet girl um, and her husband does a lot of stuff around the property to get it set up but she's been communicating with us and, and getting everything set up so if you ever listen to this thank you so much yes she probably won't but no we're recording a podcast in your home, so. Yes, and we're having <laughs> fun doing it. Yeah, we are. So what are we doing later tonight? This is what we're most excited about for this whole weekend. <laughs> Making hot dogs. Making hot dogs. <laughs> we I, It's the little things. Like, I noticed myself the other day when I was in a, uh, what was it, Target? I was in Target with Mitchell. And what what caught my eye in the store was the appliances, <laughs> Yep. I was like, you know, you know, Mitchell, I'm becoming an adult when the appliances are now yes. catching my eye. I was like, oh, that's a pretty good deal for yeah. a toaster oven. Yeah. I don't need funny. a toaster oven. <laughs> no, I just, we I, have too many appliances yeah, in our we do. apartment. We did prioritize for the wedding. We did prioritize kitchen stuff. Yes, we did. Because which was a big win. Kitchen is the majority of our space in our apartment. Yes. Yeah, so we've been married uh, for a little while now, mm-hmm. since late May. So what's that? June, July, August, September, now halfway through October. So about four and a half months. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty awesome. How's, what's, get a, get no, a little review. I mean, little it's review. about five months because next week will be our five. Yeah, that's month true. Anniversary. So give us a little review, Ellie. How have you enjoyed being married to this doofus so far? I have loved being married. It has definitely been a whirlwind of different things, but I have enjoyed every moment of it. Really? That's that's such a glowing review of something that everybody <laughs> seems to crap on nowadays. Oh uh, yeah, no kidding. I it always confused me when people like crap on getting married and all of this mm-hmm. stuff and because you know, there's the old adage which is like, oh, love is like a lot of effort. Like love is effort. Yes. Um but you know, of course we work really hard to like make sure that we prioritize each other and make sure that mm-hmm. you know, we're not you know, making each other too upset i i do sometimes intentionally make you upset because it's, yes. it's kind of funny it's really annoying i'm sorry it's needed sometimes but <laughs> nevertheless we go out of our way to make sure that you know we're, we're having a good time and we're 
prioritizing each other and get, spending a lot of time. Um, yes. And I feel like a lot of people just don't want to put in the energy yeah. to do that anymore, which is just sad because it's, it's a really fun time if you, if you let it. Well, I feel like we had like a big realization this month because we were kind of just like going through the motions of life and we hadn't gone on a date since we got married. Yeah, Remember that's that? true. And, I, and you were like, we literally haven't gone out like just you and I, like we had gone out with some friends, but mostly like we stayed in mm -hmm. even so. And I was like, you're so right. We need to like start prioritizing, like going out on dates and like doing little things that we enjoy to yeah. just keep the the spark alive you know oh, definitely because we could just come home every night and do the same thing which we usually do like watch netflix and no shame no shame it's a good routine yes um and it's nice to kind of like wind down at the end of the day yes but you know having you know relationships seeing my parents like and they're they're deep into their marriage mm -hmm. and so it's like it's really cool to see them like still have that like young love mm -hmm. you know on a day-to-day -day basis for sure and and then try to emulate that into our relationship yes it takes a lot more than you think it and does. so speaking of just a little like little funny things that happen in marriage obviously we're on a budget yes and so we try to you know make sure that we're not going over budget uh tracking our spending mm -hmm. making sure everything is is kind of fitting within those bounds the funniest thing just happened hmm. i uncovered the best so the best feeling ever is oh, like when yeah. you're walking down the street and you reach into your pocket in a pair of pants that you haven't worn in a while yeah and you pull out 20 bucks or you're like, like you that clean is out your closet and you find 100 yeah, bucks 100 bucks in a jacket or something yeah. you're like you're this like, wow. is awesome or even yeah. just like a couple cents you're like this is epic yeah. i just found some money five dollars five bucks yeah. i found money in our budget mm -hmm. that i was not accounting for for months yeah so ever since i started working my job i haven't been accounting for this money that i've been getting mm -hmm. i i just didn't do the math i just assumed it worked out mm -hmm. so i get money taken out obviously for taxes ira and like company benefits yes and then i get money put back in at the end of the budget for driving expenses mm -hmm. the only problem is i had never actually done the calculation from gross income my, subtracting those costs out mm -hmm. and then adding back in the driving i just assumed that my take-home pay included that included that uh -huh. and so i wasn't doing any math and in the budget i put in my gross and take out those costs but i never added back in yeah. the driving expense so for a couple of months there we you know where i was working and you weren't like, we were going. We were skating a yeah. little on thin ice with the budget, um, and that's not bad for either of us. I think it's just like a consequence of income and then cost of expenses that were happening. Yeah, I was like, shoot, babe, like we're going, we're going a little over budget here. Yes. Lo and behold, we weren't. We weren't ever. We never have. Yes. So that's always fun. I, I took yesterday, or not yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I took yesterday. And spent a lot of time and went back through the entirety of the budget and made sure to input back in all of those times I, I gypped ourselves. Yeah. And it was great. Um, so there were a lot, of, a lot of extra coinage that we were not taking into account. So we're, we're okay, babe. Yes, we're, we're going to be just We're going to be just fine. Because <laughs> that, was, that was a... There were a couple of moments where you were like, are we like gonna be okay gonna be okay yes it's like yes we are gonna be just fine um and of course like i'm i like to be pretty positive about yes. that kind of thing yes you are and which is a know, good thing sometimes it is for sure um other times you know you need a little bit more healthy outlook mm -hmm. which is i love being married to you because i think you give me a healthy dose of like okay you say it's gonna be good is it actually going to be good? Yeah. Um, a realistic view. Yeah. Realistic view. Um, I idealize things a lot. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think, you know, the whole time I was like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Um, and it ultimately panned out, Yes, which is so great. You were right. I'm not trying to be right. No, I was I, trying to be, I know you're not, but not I gotta give you the wins where you deserve them. I know very, very <laughs> rarely do I. That's it. So that's another funny thing about marriage is, and I think Mitchell and I have talked about this before is, like when you start dating somebody or you get married to somebody mm -hmm. like it's you have to realize you're it's it's not time for you to win anymore yeah it's it's time for you to just throw in the towel yes 
And I think a lot of times guys go into that thinking that it's just going to be them losing constantly. But I think a big part of marriage and dating is realizing that if both people come to the table with the mentality that I'm wrong and I'm going to lose, yes, you, you nobody's ever frustrated yes. that you walk away not having like quote unquote won the situation. Absolutely. So there's been a couple of times where like we've both come to the table like you you think you're wrong mm-hmm. and I think I'm wrong and then it just really works out. Yes. Because we both have there's lost no that tension. expectation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. What has been a couple of times where you have like, you know, growing places where you've seen us grow as a couple or like, you know, find something new in our relationship that we hadn't really thought about before that some people listening might be actually curious about when they're dating somebody or, you know, going to possibly marry somebody? Well, I feel like our arguments have gotten better. Yes, definitely. Because I think... Well, I think one, when you're young, you kind of have like all this passion and a lot of times it can just be misplaced in like arguments. Sure. And I think since we are so young and have gotten married, I think that like came in full force when we got married because again, we weren't really like with each other every day when we were dating. And so we hadn't been together all the time. And so I felt like at the beginning of our marriage, there was a lot of like push and pull and we just weren't giving and taking and all of that kind of stuff we were just kind of pushing against each other and butting heads yeah but then I think we sort of just realized like as we took a step back from it we were like why are we arguing like we have argued we have figured out how to argue over the years but I think just being in the same space a lot of times it's like a newfound it was argument. a new yeah and like we we got to give each other space before but now we live together so it's like yeah now there's no really place for you to go, especially in a small apartment. It's like, dang it, babe, I'm going to go to the other room. Yeah. Like, what does that even... And close the door on your face. Like, yeah. I don't know. So I feel like we have really grown in that area of just like realizing that, one, I'm arguing with my husband, not like an enemy. And two, like we have just, I feel like we've become a bit more calm in that area. Like obviously we have our ups and downs with it. Like everyone is going definitely, to, definitely. but I've definitely seen some improvement of just, again, us coming to the table of being calm rather than exploding on each other and just being like, you know what? I can't have this conversation right now because I'm going to explode sure, just sure. because of my emotions. It's nothing with you, but I'm just like really heated right now or really just overwhelmed so let's just talk about it like later yeah and like we used to not be like that where we would just fight right then and there to like get it over with but like I remember one time in the car I was like we're just so our emotions are so heavy right now let's just turn the music on relax for the next 20 minutes of our driving experience and then we can chat about it when we get to our destination rather than just being like yelling at each other in the car and just making it a whole thing yeah that's that's a really good point because you know being being married and dating are two very very different animals yeah because you can you can have like while you're dating you can still have your separate lives yes right and so like especially with us you went to kennesaw i went to georgia tech and yes you know when, when i would come visit you at kennesaw or vice versa you would come visit me at tech hey granted much more rarely those communal bathrooms, very hard to convince you to come down there yeah, and see me. Yeah, that me away for sure. Yeah, that's okay. But worth it, free housing. <laughs> yes, um, that's true. So when I would come visit you, you know, you know, we would come, we would get there. If we did have an argument, you know, it would, it would either be resolved before I left or like we could use the separation to like kind of just let it die in the wind. Yeah. And we just don't have, we just didn't have that coming into marriage. Yeah. And I think for ev- anybody out there that's going to get married or is about to be married, um, a couple friend of ours is about to be married and we're about to have a small group with them. Yep. Um, and we, we had the conversation with them. We were like, hey, yes, we love the idea of doing a couples group with you. Mm-hmm. But I think we should be intentional with the timing. Yeah. Just because y'all are really close to getting married. And I get, you guys probably feel like you're, you're married already. I'm. Sh- we did guaranteed before we got married. We almost fell into the trap of getting a place together before we got married. Yeah. Like we just felt like we were really ahead of the curve. 
but the second you get married, you realize it's just a, it's just a just different, different, it's just different. And so, you know, for them, we were like, okay, look, that's great. We're excited that we're all excited about doing this, but let's take, take pause just for a second and then come back into being a little more intentional about, you know, having the small group with married couples. And there's just different struggles between married couples and like dating couples. Yes, and very. It's hard to relate to people. I mean, obviously, it's good to have friends in every stage of life. And I think mm-hmm. that's really important. But when you're having, you know, a small group or it's really important, first of all, to have friends in the same life stage as you. Because, again, yeah. like our friends that are single or our friends that are dating, they don't sometimes understand. Like when we try to explain things that are going on between us, like they're not going to understand it because it's, they're just, they don't understand because they're not married. Like they don't get the bond yet that we have. No, definitely not. And there's like problems around money and budgeting, which those people, they're just doing it on their own, which again, that's very important to have those conversations with those people as well. Then there's problems with sex and all of that stuff. And like, that's just stuff that you won't understand until you are like with somebody for the rest of your life and you're sharing that with them. Yeah. So, well, especially with like now putting in perspective of like dating, mm -hmm. like so when you're dating somebody and you go on dates, a lot of times the guy pays or maybe you're like years into your relationship and maybe you're like splitting it or whatever. Yeah. A lot of times you're not really, I mean, at least I wasn't like manually tracking like how much I'm spending on dates. Yeah. So like when you get married, it really just kind of automatically snaps into, okay, it looks like we're not going on dates anymore because we don't have the budget for... But that's not true. But that's not true. Yeah. So like uh, we do have the, the money to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think intentionality is a big word. Uh, Mitchell and I have used it all the time in this podcast, like just being intentional, not only with friends, but also with obviously your partner. Yeah. And... And like realizing there are some things that you just can't sacrifice on. And one of those is like quality time and breaking the norm. So like Mm -hmm. you have a schedule, you have a thing, like go out, like go do something different. And I think this weekend is a real testament to that. Oh yeah. Like I was like, let's just, let's just go do something different. Um, and sitting down and like, you know, admiring just the, the great outdoors, going on walks, hikes, just out in the, out in the woods. Yeah. It's, you know, I sound like just a a, a horrible city dweller. No, but it really is like the, the Airbnb has a bunch of windows like all around and we've opened the windows. We've just like let all this cool air because it's finally cooling down. Definitely. And like you just, we're in the middle of a forest. So it's just, you hear the the, the rustle leaves. of the trees it's yeah. just so calming and i feel like it came at a perfect time because i the work has been crazy for me because i started a new job and it's just been go 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 and it was just so nice to be here and like detach myself from that and we were talking about like doing something for my birthday like coming out somewhere and we were trying to look in north georgia but everything is so expensive up there and, yeah like, definitely we thought of maybe a winery and all the wineries were already oh reserved gosh. and all yeah. this stuff and it was and just, expensive and expensive yeah and then when noah texted it to me it literally made my week like i was so happy and I don't know. It's just the little things that he thought about that and was like, I want to like make this special for Ellie. I want to just make her feel special on her birthday weekend and we can get away. And I feel like it's just established like a whole other bond between us because we get to just like not be on our phones. We're not on social media, which is something that I have to be on for work. So it's like kind of consumes me. I have to do research about what's the latest trends on TikTok or whatever. And so at night when I do come home, sometimes I'll just go into social media because I'm doing my job, but I also get sucked in. Mm -hmm. And it's just been so nice that like, I haven't been worried about that. I'm not stressed about emails on the weekends or trying to get stuff done for work it's just us and it's like just so amazing to have someone that like thinks about those things and prioritizes and let's oh thank you but let's also put in perspective too this is two two real two real days out of town yeah you know what i mean like like it's it was we left on friday we got delayed way late because of work my work yeah which is fine totally fine but life happens so we got delayed on friday we get here we got a nice full day hikes nap 
some mm -hmm, and you know <laughs> just everything tied up in the day which has yes. been great it's gonna you know we're gonna have a little nightcap we're gonna crack some wine yep. um maybe for this coming friday episode which might be the second episode we'll record tonight we'll have maybe some wine share some wine together which would be nice yes um and then kind of close out the night and we'll you know obviously in in the morning well leave the place better than we found it um but it's it's really two days yeah but it's amazing because yeah. it like I felt like we have been here for like four days already and it's literally been a day. I know. Like well, I think I think time time just is is all relative mm -hmm. to what's happening. Like I sat out in an Eno and read my book for probably an hour. An hour. But it probably felt to you like four or five hours just yeah. sitting there reading that book. I was so comfy. I was it's chilly out there, so I wrapped myself in a comfy blanket and I was just being pushed by the wind in the Eno <laughs> and it was just like things where it just slows down it's just so nice to just kind of step away from the craziness of life and you get to yeah. share that with your husband which is amazing which is the best um sharing it with me is always a, a blessing for you so when when we're <laughs> i'm kidding what did you say i kind of zoned out <laughs> That's most of what I say. Uh, no, what I said sharing it with me is always a blessing for you. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Um, yes. But when I was sitting in the Eno out there, I say Eno. It has the Eno straps. I don't think it's an actual it's like Eno. It's like a hammock. Thing. Just whatever, a hammock. Uh, you can kind of, you'll probably see it in the background. It's right behind Ellie's head. Yeah, um, so. If you don't know, we're on YouTube. Go check it out. Uh, YouTube Man Card Podcast. Um, check out our, uh, actually, sorry, I say our ugly mugs. Mitchell's not on the show right now. So one beautiful mug and my ugly mug. But <laughs> I was sitting out in the hammock and it really reminded me of when I was like in high school. Yeah. And like the days uh, when when you would put up the Eno or like maybe you were on a church retreat or something. And there was there was nothing going on. Nothing mm -hmm. be ex nothing was expected of you. No. Nothing was being just asked go of to you. School. You just go to school, do your homework, and do te whatever. Do your extracurriculars. But you'd but hit like the weekend, or you'd hit you know after school, oh, yeah. and you didn't have something to do. You had nothing. You just put up the you put up the hammock, and you just sit there. Yeah. And I was looking up at the trees, and I was like, wow, I haven't felt this way in, in a long years. Time. Yes. Because really, like. Work, yes, it is, you know, nine to five, whatever. Yours, your hours are different, but Very mine's strange. usually nine to five or later mm -hmm. in the night. But that doesn't stop. Like, you come home and you're thinking about it. And, like, on the weekends, you're thinking, okay, what can I get done so I can make next week easier? Yeah. And so it's just always on your mind. And also, just like life things, like things mm -hmm. that you have to get done and bills have to be paid. Like, I feel like there's so much space in your mind that's being taken up. And a lot of times we just forget about that because we are thinking about those things and we yeah. don't realize like how important it is to actually just like step away, give space between those things and share it with someone you love. Yeah. That's, it, it's just really strange to think about like spending time with somebody like all the time. Yeah. And like, you take a vacation, but you're taking it with the same person. Mm -hmm. So I think like that it's like another added layer of intentionality that you have yeah. to have because it's like, well, you know, we have our daily routines, but we're always with each other. You come home, we're yep. always with each other. Like mm -hmm. every single day we're with each other. Yep. And then, you know, same on vacation. Like we're with each other again. So it's like, well, how can you have a vacation? It's like we both have to be within kind of a collective mindset to say like, okay, we're going to take a break. And I was not in that mindset yesterday. No. I was stressed about work. But once we like got here and I just calmed down on the ride home, I it was my birthday yesterday. And it was just kind of a different birthday because I've never actually had to quote unquote work on my birthday before, you know, because yeah. I was in school. And usually when I, I like worked as a waitress, I would usually ask off for my birthday sure. or if I was nannying, like I would ask off on my birthday because those things didn't really matter. But now that I have a big girl job, like yeah. you have to work on your birthday. And it just felt like I was living in this alternate universe because I had never had like where people don't know it's your birthday because when you go to school, like everybody knows it's your birthday, even in like college, right. because I was in such a niche group at dance, like everyone knew it was my birthday because you know, a tight knit group. It's tight. Yeah. And so people would always say happy birthday, but I was like living in this alternate universe of going to work yesterday and like going around all these people who just didn't know that it was my birthday. Yeah. Which is, I'm not expecting anyone to know it's my birthday, you know, but yeah, no shame. 
But just that weird like feeling of, wow, it's just another day for everybody else and it doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't matter, you know, in the grand scheme of things. But it was just kind of a weird experience because I was at like the UPS store and I was having like the worst experience with one of these ladies. And I was 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 getting play by play text. Oh, I was just so frustrated because it was one of those things where I thought it was going to be like a five minute ordeal. And it turned out to be literally like 45 minutes at the UPS store. And it was nobody's fault. Like it was like a, a lot of complicated things I had to send out and all these long addresses and all of the packages were different. So it was this whole thing. Yeah. But I'm just sitting there and thinking like, I'm so frustrated right now. One, I'm so I had I was planning to meet Noah like two hours before that, but I got caught up with stuff before. Yeah. And so I'm just sitting there like this lady doesn't know it's my birthday. She is making it so difficult for me. Like I am just about to cry because I'm going to be here for probably an hour working with her to try to finish the stuff. And I finally just took a deep breath and I was like, you know what? It's another day for this woman. There is no reason for me to be mean to her. Like, I just need to step away from it and detach myself. And then I got in the car and just, like, calm myself down, listen to some worship music because I needed to recenter my soul. And then we got on our way. And after that, I felt better. But, you know, it does take everyone to be in the same mindset, like, in a relationship to be able to both enjoy it. Yeah. Because I feel like when I was really stressed Noah was then stressed and he was like you know trying to make me feel better because he's like it's your birthday like let's make sure we're you know enjoying it and I was like I'm just have fun now please I know I was just like in a weird headspace and finally I got to that place and and it's just been so relaxing and we've just been celebrating and having a good time so now you know how I was feeling yesterday yeah when you got home yes I was like let's have some fun yep let's have some drinks but nightlife the, sometimes you know, you know it takes, it takes a more for a certain people if you've gone through a long day yeah so but you just had grace with me you let me be alone while I packed my things and you're very kind about it and sometimes sometimes especially for people like me who like like noise like like things happening like conversation mm-hmm sometimes silence is is critical yes um and i think yesterday there was a great employment of that of that strategy mm-hmm. which you know the silence for for people like me is a lot of times interpreted as as anger yeah you know as somebody is mad at mad at you or me because they're silent yeah and so you know it's it's really hard to be quiet for yeah. people like me and uh, mitchell as well we're, we're, we're very similar in that regard and so, you know, yesterday it was a lot of, you know, I was like, I had to kind of switch gears. Yeah. Because I was like, all right, yeah, we just need to be quiet right now. Yeah. Like this is, this is not a moment for, for talking. Space. And that's, yeah. again, I feel like that's something we've just learned over these last five months is like, okay, it's okay to have space. Like it's okay to be silent. Like I, I, I remember someone once told me like, you know, you're with the right person when you can just sit in silence and not be uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 And I feel like that's so true because like we can sit in the car for hours driving to Florida and listen to music and not really talk. And it's not because we're like mad at each other or anything. We're just like comfortable, like doing our own thing, me reading, me listening to a podcast. But then we also can talk for hours if we wanted to. Definitely. And it's just based on our mindset. And it's all about just not getting offended about whatever mindset that is like yeah i'm not offended if you don't want to talk and you're not offended if i don't want to talk and it's it's a good learning curve and i feel like we've learned it over these last five months thank goodness yes so we are going to send you right now to the halftime show a little mm-hmm. special one with the wife so we'll see how it goes <laughs> uh, but we will see you on the other side check you then see ya What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Man Card Podcast Halftime Show. Today's halftime show is going to be about candles. Candles? I think candles are really important in life um, because they give off, you know, just just a different smell that you're looking for for the season of life that you're in. Yes. Um, you know, you go through the year. You start off in January. You might want, you know, some some vanilla You know, some nice new year (laughs) smells. Um, You know, you go through the summer. You might want some uh, some lavender, some lilac. Lilac? um, Some good citrus, 
good idea. Mm -hmm. Um, And you get into winter, fall, you're looking for some of those spices, some spices, some of the cinnamons, some of the, you know, pumpkins of of the winter season. So uh, I think candles are a good uh, kind of metaphor for life. Um, And I actually have a question for you about candles. Mm -hmm. Where where might people out there find episodes uh, of something, uh, I don't know what, that might kind of also walk through the different seasons of people's lives um this is the biggest stretch of a metaphor i have ever witnessed in my life (laughs) hey go with it babe come on okay sorry where where might they find something of you know if they wanted insight into you know anything between marriage and and just relationships with friends mancardpodcast.com that's it you got it babe um but in all seriousness i did get you some candles for your birthday yes he did and they smelled amazing and trust me when i tell you tj maxx is a great place to buy candles yes but it's also a great place to find candles that smell like shit (laughs) so if you want candles if you want to buy somebody a candle that you do not like um then go to tj maxx because they've got some (laughs) poop smelling candles i don't know like who is making these candles and thinks think they smell good i don't know but one thing that doesn't smell like poop is mancardpodcast.com go check it out that's where we're all of our merch is um we've got hoodies we've got sweatshirts we've got nice joggers which are beanies. super cool beanies my now friend that the winter Lane, season. she freaking stole my beanie and she looks fire in it she got yeah. like a million compliments the last time she wore it so ladies that means you can wear it too it is super cute it's funny i just like to think like uh, in my mind when a when a lady wears the man card podcast merch mm-hmm. i just think it's so like it's it's uh it's like when you wear it you're almost like like saying, hey, I haven't given up on the idea of traditional masculinity. Yeah. You know, it's like, absolutely. like I'm here, I'm staying with the guys. Yep. Like, um, you know, I am, I am one we with the boys. stand with the kings over here. Yes, absolutely. Um, you wouldn't have any good kings in the world if you didn't have amazing queens. So go absolutely. check out mancardpodcast.com. Get yourself some merch yep. um, and even just support the podcast. There's some good yep. links over there to our YouTube. Share it up. Yeah, share Give it up. A rating. Yeah. Do all the things. Do all the things. But thanks for tuning in to this halftime show mini episode within the main man card podcast episode. We'll see you right after this. See ya. All right, everybody. Now that you've made it through that mini man card podcast Very episode. Bizarre mini listen, episode. Listen, candles are essential in life. Okay? <laughs> they are. They so are essential. It's always important to have a smell for your home. Yes. Um, and uh, to get a good smell for your life mancardpodcast.com i think that's a great way to do it um <laughs> but on the second half of the episode there's two things we kind of want to touch on the first of which is um and we might have touched on it before but it's always good to continue to touch on things that are important in mm-hmm. life uh hey get your mind out of the gutter uh okay. expectations so uh i know that you had different expectations coming into marriage uh-huh. um for things that uh, have held true yeah some that have not held true mm-hmm. um, and same for me for you you had the idea for this little kind of segment start us off with an expectation that you might have had um, coming into marriage um, of me or of just marriage in general that has either been true or, or maybe not true um, over the course of these past five months oh gosh you're really throwing me in the fire See, I, tried, I tried such to pull a good it out one, though okay fine i'll start off then um i tried to i tried to bleed out that sentence so that you could have a little time to I know think, and I was really thinking but like I need just a that's second okay. more I'll start off with mine okay. which I, I've definitely mentioned it I think on the show before um, but it's um, the expectation of the, the bathroom space oh yes um, women have the, it's the joke of women that hey you left the toilet seat down or yes. up you left the toilet seat up and they get on to men constantly over this like it's almost a trope at this point Mm -hmm. in movies tv shows and just in life it's like oh put the put the toilet seat down when you're done using it the and then and you know camera pans over to the sink where it's just laden with like makeup hair curler straightener like all these different (laughs) the the eyelash curl like all these different products yep and and it's like wait you're gonna tell me that that leaving the toilet seat up is the most critical thing we have to solve right now <laughs> it's almost just a trope and that has actually proved wrong wrong um, in in our relationship specifically yes so I'm not saying it's not a truism in other areas of life and other relationships yep. but i was happily 
surprised yes. um, that I was proven wrong that the bathroom space is actually one of the cleanest spaces in our apartment. Yes, I do keep it very clean. I bought like one of these like organizers on Amazon, ladies. It's like literally 20 bucks and it's yep. amazing and it has a million little drawers and I just put all of my makeup in there and it's never seen like, it, I mean, it's see-through, but it's just always organized because it is see-through because it makes you keep it organized. Yeah. And then I just open the drawer, use the thing and I put it right back in the drawer and it's so easy. I don't have to go fishing through like bags. I used to have my makeup in bags and it was just like, it was just atrocious. I think the clear, the clear aspect of it adds to its cleanliness, but also adds to its functionality. Yes. Because you can, I can see, see, it's like, oh, I need my, you know, lip gloss. And you're like, okay, yep. it's on the third drawer down, right there, yes. bam. Even yes. if you forget, because you might put it in a different drawer, but you're always looking for like, oh, I'm looking for the pink cap, you yep. know, whatever. And it's like right it's there. very easy. Yeah. So, okay. My turn. I came up with one. Okay, good. So, I feel like chores and like how the household yes. was going to be run. I wasn't sure how that was going to be. And I feel like it has kind of changed over the course of our marriage because Definitely has. when we got married, I was nannying, but it wasn't like a full-time job. So I would come home and sometimes I would have weeks off. So our house was like so clean, like Constantly. that first like month or two months of our marriage. Like it was always clean. I was always cleaning because when I had weeks off, I was so bored that I would just literally vacuum the house every single morning. And I did the dishes all the time. The laundry was always done. And I feel like then when I got this full-time job, it was kind of like a shock for Noah and I, because we would come home and it would be dirty. We were both like, wait, what? Weren't you supposed to do that? And, yeah. and we just didn't communicate that well because we were just both used to me doing it. And it wasn't like Noah didn't want to do it. It was just like it had been or, done. Or didn't do it. Yeah. It had just been done and it was clean. Yeah. And so we kind of had to start talking about, okay, we got to work together on this now because now that I'm not here all the time and my hours are longer than his. So it was like, we got to work together. So Noah has totally jumped in, which has been amazing. And I don't think I expected he would be like that hands on with that kind of stuff, but he always does the dishes. He always cleans up. Like it's really nice. I, I typically do the laundry just because I like doing laundry yeah. and I like vacuuming, but Noah likes doing the dishes and cooking and stuff like that. It's, it's funny because like my sister has like a thing for like food on plates mm. like it's whole it's yeah, always disturbed out. her yeah. um and i used to work there was this there's this camp called camp woodlands mm -hmm. um great christian camp i did you know just their regular week-long camp and then i did their salt program uh, which mm -hmm. is their student leadership training program um and ministry you know and it was three weeks it's a three week long so basically you're just plugged into this camp no phone Nothing yep. for three weeks. I mean, yeah. imagine, imagine in today's society, if we if we walked up to a random teenager and took away their phone Never. for three weeks. I, I mean, not just phone, access to popular culture. Yeah, they for would three explode. weeks, a they month. Would actually, it's like explode. I mean, picture yourself out there. You get your phone, laptop, all your electronics taken away for a month. Yeah, and you're like, okay, now go go live your life. I would so be into doing that. That would be amazing. If if your job wasn't so heavily reliant on social media and like access to internet and pop culture and trends like that, it would be a cool thing to try. Yes. Um, I do it. Wait, I, you have to finish your thought. Oh, though. oh, what was my thought? You were talking oh, about yeah. how your sister. So my sister has a thing for food. So when I was at Woodlands for those three weeks, I was working in the dish station, mm -hmm. right? For all of these little kids Ew. and nothing's grosser than little kids. And so that nothing. throughout that three week program, when I was in the dish station cleaning or like, work in the clean station where, you know, all the clean plates came out of the dishwasher. My mind got broken for touching dirty, like dirty oh, dishes. I'm sure. So yeah. I, I don't have a problem for touching anything in yes. the sink because in reality, and this is what you kind of have to keep in the back of your mind is it's all about to get clean anyway. Yeah. Right. You're about to wash your hands. Yep. So like your hands, it's, it's almost like you're out in the woods and you stick your hand into a thing of mud. It's like, but you know with the expectation that your hand is about to get clean again. Yeah. Like I'm about to immediately put soap on it and clean it. Yeah. So that's always in the back of my mind. Like your dirty coffee mugs, disgusting. They are pretty I gross. hate coffee. I've never liked coffee. I'm so sorry. I and need to start when you cleaning When you've had right one of those coffee cups in your car for a <laughs> week <laughs> yeah. with that, with that shit trapped in there. It's absolutely disgusting. It's gross. And so 
you know, luckily you found somebody who doesn't get disturbed by anything like that. Yeah. Um, but imagine if you were, if you had the unlucky happenstance of getting married to somebody who was disturbed oh, by I know. that kind of stuff. Well, some, I'm usually pretty good about it, but sometimes I like smells really freak me out sometimes. So I'll get, Correct. I'll pick something up out of the dishwasher that's been like buried by other things. And I mm-hmm. literally just gag. I'm like, Noah, you got to take this one. And he just comes in full force and does it for me which is very kind yeah so the other half of that household chores um it always started off with you you were the one who watered all the plants oh yeah this is this is one of the biggest switches that has (laughs) happened is for months you would be watering the plants i was tending to them i was doing doing everything and then i forgot about their existence and then i just started to ask i was like hey did you water the plants today I was like no and I, I distinctly remember when that transition happened was it was like a week and i would ask you every day like hey did you water the plants just not even like a hey you're supposed to water the plants but no. it was like more of a curiosity question like did you do this well we have window boxes mm-hmm. on our patio and it gets so much sun that they need water every single day yeah, they get cooked and they so literally I like, get i was like oh the plants fried. probably got cooked today did you water the plants and so i would then you would say no and I would immediately get up and go water the plants. I know. I was so bad about it. And now I'm the pr- I'm the plants boy now. So I water the plants every day. Yeah. Um, every night, actually. Because I want I want that, that to soak in overnight so they can be ready for the, the hot day for the next day. Another thing I did not expect from marriage is how much freaking laundry there is. Like, yeah. I, I, I could have told you that was coming. <laughs> I did not expect that at all because Noah's clothes are huge. Like... His clothes fill up the laundry basket after like two days where my clothes like I've always done my laundry like growing up and I could go a week and a half without doing laundry. Like obviously a lot of the clothes I wear, I wear, you know, often, you know, you always wear your favorite clothes once a week at least. And so but I still could go a long time without doing my laundry because it's so my clothes are small because I'm a small human. But this man's clothes like I have to do three separate loads for one laundry basket like he like it fills it up it's overflowing it takes my whole soul and muscle to pull the freaking laundry basket from our bedroom to the laundry station and i i need to get one with wheels on it just so i can push it in a lid in a lid because man this boy is stinky like i did not expect the stench it's the trifecta so here's the problem with my job where your job is like a little bit uh, has a better perk in that regard. I I go to work and I, I get I I start smelling after work. Yeah. Right. Because it's just like I'm moving. I'm moving things. Yes. I'm like, you know, tint and paint, like all this different stuff. And then I get done. So then I immediately finish work and go straight to the gym. Yes. So I take off that the the work outfit and that's put it in the gross. gym bag. Yep. That's already gross. And then I take out my gym clothes, which are yet to be gross. And then I go work out. And then that's disgusting. That's super disgusting because I, I used to not, but I, now I sweat like a maniac. A maniac. And then I get home. I take both of those out of my gym bag or like I take off my workout clothes, take the work clothes out of the, out of the, the gym bag, put those in the dirty clothes hamper. So that's two sets of clothes already for the for one day. Yeah. And then I take a shower and then, and then get into, I almost said slip into, what an old woman am I? <laughs> I slip into my my more comfy clothes. Silk pajamas. Yeah, get out of town. Actually, that sounds kind (laughs) of nice. Um, And then I get into like just some some clothes for the evening. Yes. And and then once I'm done with the day there, sometimes not every day, but sometimes I take the take that off, right? And then that goes in the dirty clothes hamper too. So it's almost it's almost three sets of clothes daily. And once you put something in that dirty hamper, it cannot come out. It can't come out because it's like it's touching all the sweaty clothes. So I've made two separate baskets of like our clean dirty clothes like things that maybe like jeans that you wore you know once and you weren't sweating or being gross and you throw them in this basket that doesn't get disgusting from the sweatiness of the laundry basket yeah so that that is and i could have told you that was going to happen because at tech i had the luxury of being an ra for a few years Mm -hmm. and and you get to use both sets of furniture so i had a you know pretty pretty large area for my closet space yes you did but along with that came the consequence of i didn't have to do laundry as much by function of having so many options for clothes yeah so the the problem started to arise when i would go through a week and just by myself i would go through a whole week and not do laundry yeah i don't know get like a quarter the way through the next week 
and then realize, oh man, I need to, I need to do laundry. And I would take, I'm telling you right now, you, it, it probably weighed at least 80 pounds. Well, you t- brought a lot of it to my apartment. I did bring some of it to your apartment to do. Yeah. But, and that was most of the time because I, by that year I was paying for laundry again. Yeah. I found a way to, to finagle Cheap tech out of, uh, yeah. out of some laundry. I probably stole hundreds of dollars from tech and laundry. Oh yeah. Um, o- overpowered for sure. If you live in Glen or Towers, let me know. I can hook you up with free laundry if they haven't switched over the free laundry system yet. But that, that I knew that was coming yeah. because I'm just like by function of working out and just day to day wearing of clothes. Like that was two sets of clothes. Now I'm working too. So it's three. When I was dancing more too, like I did have to do more laundry because I ran out of like leotards and tights and all, like the pants that I wore for my modern classes. Like, Definitely. And those got gross because I was on oh, the floor. So gross. Like, you know, dancing, it's disgusting. Nothing so. is grosser than girls who dance. <laughs> um, and, and they want to, they want to make you believe that they're not gross. Very yeah. pretty on the stage. It's disgusting. Our stuff is really gross. Their stuff is disgusting. Our Backstage shoes. is disgusting. Backstage um, is not disgusting. Don't even lie. No, it's not. Get, I you love get back backstage. And, okay, fine. You can love backstage all you want. But it's it's frightening because you all get back there and every between like all the sets coming on, you're getting naked with everybody. It's Everything's going everywhere. You're throwing <laughs> clothes that everywhere. Is disgusting? Well, for, for, <laughs> for just a normal person, it's horrifying. Oh, yeah, Especially somebody who's clean. People that aren't dancers, like if they come like to the dressing rooms or whatever to like oh, say dress, hello. Oh, don't even start about the dressing rooms. They're like, what is happening? Like, oh, it's like there's it's so Mount, much Mount happening. Vesuvius of hairspray. Oh yeah, you and will hairspray, probably get cancer hairspray one day. Doesn't smell good. <laughs> no. Like it smells not no, great. No, not after no. And, and then all the makeup. And makeup and after you're done, when you come to like get your flowers, like the flowers almost start wilting immediately. <laughs> like y'all are stanky. I don't, no, I'm not. I put perfume okay, on. Okay, fine. It's you freshen up. Great. But some of that, well, I'm not going to lie, babe. There were, some of that, some of that shit cuts through. Oh my gosh. Y'all, let's just say, let's just say as, as much Well, what time, we did on stage was very difficult. Correct. I agree. But like, think of it in terms of context. So like a baseball player, like if I was to go play baseball, come off the field after a good win, you're not, ex- you don't expect me to smell good, no. right? So it kind of, you don't even think about it. You really think I smelled bad coming off stage? Oh, you along with every single other dancer. Oh my gosh, that's so mean. I feel like I smelled great. I brought my best perfume. No, no, but that's the thing. Is and you, my deodorant. You f- okay, that's fine. You didn't smell as bad as you I'm could have, I'm sure. I'm very offended right now. Oh no, I don't be. Because I think like if, let's just say it this way. If I, if Mitchell went to a baseball game and came off the field. That's not the same thing. no. It is the same thing. No, it's not. You both spent a, a few hours physically exerting yourself, and then you you finish with your task and greet whoever was there watching you. It's the same thing, just a different game. I feel like it smelled good. That's fine. Feel however you want. You smell you smelled better than you could have if you hadn't stopped before to to refresh yourself before you came out to meet us. I feel like you smelled other people, not me. Okay, that's fine. Uh, guaranteed, some of those other girls smelled like trash too. I, oh yeah, for sure. But I don't. And I'm not knocking on you. I'm saying, writ large, dancers, after you finish your performance, get a little, get a little extra helping of stuff after your dance, because y'all, y'all's leotards. Woo! Well, yeah, the leotards are disgusting, you but not smell us. Like gross. Not I'm, us. The the stuff we wear is disgusting. Correct. And if you don't change after you dance, yes, you're gonna smell. But I panky. always change. Okay. I always bring like a nice dress to wear and change into. So you were you were one of the better ones. Yeah, because if some of those other girls go out in their costume. That's disgusting. Yeah, some of the other girls did, and they were like, "Oh, that's gross." Ew, no, you're not even supposed to do that. That's unprofessional. Yeah, unprofessional. You tell them, babe. Yeah. But yeah, dancers want to make you believe that they don't stink. You you oh can gosh. trick a lot of people. Dancers are some of the stinkiest people. Well, the leotards and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of times they'll like reuse costumes. It's like gross. Like we have to disinfect them in like the most ways possible. It's gross. Yeah, it's disgusting. Um, Because a lot of times those costumes can't be like washed normally. No, because there's jewels or it was hand sewn. And like most like the costumes I wore at Kennesaw were literally made for my exact body. Yeah. So and they were like you couldn't shrink them. You couldn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Let's move into the second half of the second half. Wow. Um, wow. I know. Double, double dose there. Um, double whammy. Yeah. So it is our, it's our birthday. It's our birthday season. Birthday. Birthday month. Yes. And I thought we could take this second half to kind of dive a little bit into, and oh, before we do, um, our host made us this little board. It's so cute. If you go over to YouTube, check it YouTube. out. 
but they made us this little board. It is so cute with uh, wishing wishing both Ellie and myself happy birthday. Yes. Um, Haven underscore tiny house. Yep. Check it out. Instagram. Is that um, really the name of it? Check the thing. So we're not like. Yeah. It Haven is. underscore tiny house. Yep. Um, it's so cute, y'all. Like I'm obsessed with this place. It's like you have to drive a little bit further to get in here and we like came up and they have this neon sign that says stay a while up here and it's like bright pink yeah and when we drove up it was on and it was like glowing glowing, and it was so cool and i'm so excited to go start a fire and make some more i I like literally can't wait we can watch the stars it's gonna be so much fun it's gonna be good but it since it since it is our birthday season i thought we could take a little time to reminisce over how our birthdays have changed over the years Mm. i know you had different kinds of birthdays than i did when we were growing up yes so i think it would be interesting to kind of dive just a little quick no i had the most epic birthdays growing up well i was one of the most extra people yes as a young person ever i don't really remember my childhood birthdays like i remember one time my aunt dressed up as an M&M for some reason, and it was epic because okay. I don't really know why. I loved M&Ms. And then I remember one time I got like the Barbie cake. You know, oh, the epic nice. Barbie cake was pretty cool. My mom, remember she was telling me that story of, I don't remember this, but she made me a, like a fruit roll-up cake. I remember that. Yeah, and, yeah she told me. And she's not a very good baker or cook. She she will totally admit that to you. Like she can whip up some good baked potatoes and stuff like that, but she like is not very good at creating masterpieces when it comes yeah. to that. And so she made me like a fruit roll-up cake and she said my reaction and she like put it down and it was so ugly. And I was just like looking with disgust at this thing and she was <laughs> like it was so funny because I had worked so hard to make this fruit roll-up cake and it literally mm. looked like someone pooped on a cake. <laughs> yeah, somebody had been murdered on top yes. of this cake. But um, yeah, I, I remember when I was younger, we had, and of course my parents were always like super generous in this regard, but they would always have like all my friends over. Mm-hmm. And this is when I was young, young. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like bowl cut young. And it would always be themed, which is great because like it's super easy to have a themed b- birthday when your birthday is two days before Halloween. Yes. So everybody pretty much, especially at that young age, um, has a costume already lined up. Oh, yeah. So there would be a couple of years where we would have a costume party so for fun. my birthday. Yeah. And it was always so much fun. Like, I would, I think, I remember one year I dressed up as like a little mad professor. Um, oh, it's so cute. Which was, oh, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Um, you know, I had, and my grandma, she like painted on the lab coat like a bunch of different things. Oh, it's so Like cute. a mad scientist would have like an eyeball and like all this so cool fun. stuff. And yeah. I spiked my hair up and had goggles. Um, and I always remembered like, and, and this is this is one distinct memory I have from that birthday is like my dad always had these these like round like garage goggles. Uh-huh. And he would use them all the time, but they were like dad's goggles in a way. Yes. And it's not like I couldn't use them, but it was like they were dad's goggles, like don't like don't touch dad's things kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then he when we were getting my costume together, he went out and got those goggles. Oh, so fun. And brought them in. It's just like little things. Yeah. Like from your childhood that you remember that's like, wow, my dad oh, like I do did that remember for me. one. We had like my dad's business partner. Um, he has like a farm um mm-hmm. kind of close to our house in Roswell. And he brought his horses. He had ponies. Oh no way. Yeah. And like my my house is on like an acre of land, so it's a pretty large area. Sure. And like in the front of my house is this like little island of trees almost. And then there's like a grass ring around it. Mm-hmm. And so they basically made like a little carousel. And That's my so dad's cool. friend, um, he like brought the ponies and we got to go on the ponies and he brought us like trotted us around what? the little island. And it was like the coolest thing ever. Like everyone was so excited to have their turn with the ponies. And of course, I went like 27 times around. Yeah, like, birthday girl. That was, I do remember that one. That was epic. Yeah, that's like, that's like next level birthday oh, yeah. stuff. That was. I thought I was doling out the big, big guns here oh, with no. my costume party, but you got freaking horses? And no, yeah, it was incredible. That's but then lucky. I feel like when I got older, like, I don't really remember like the middle years, but 
you know, like teenager, like sweet 16. I think I did something for that. I'm like losing it in my brain right now. Uh, So I actually have a very memorable birthday Mm -hmm. and it was my, I think it was third, I want to say 13th birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was at my parents' house. And of course, 13, you're in middle school. I think it was seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, my first girlfriend of the time. She, name was Helen. What's up, Helen? If you're out there, you're never going to listen to this, but what's up, Helen? <laughs> Probably doesn't know you exist anymore. I, I still remember you, um, and, you know, I thought you were all all that in a bag of chips then, but, um, uh, you know, it's like the young love thing. Yeah. So, she, she was, her birthday, oh, man, that actually, no, I can't remember if her birthday is the 15th of October or the that 10th. That would be weird. It might be weird. I think it might be the 10th, it probably but her is. birthday was also in October. Um, the best month. Best month of the year. So you know they she was a good birthdays. person because she had a she had a birthday in yes, October. October babies. So unite. I had gone to her birthday mm-hmm. where we had had our first kiss Ooh. earlier that month under the porch. We were playing manhunt. I remember you told me, yeah. And it was like she had braces and I, the you know, whole the whole, thing. it was like prototypical middle school. It was yeah. great. It was a good, it was a good first kiss. Mm-hmm. Um, at least from my perspective. I, she probably was like, that was garbage. Um, I'm sure. But... Nevertheless, still, first kiss, check, got that out of the way, flash forward a couple weeks, it was my birthday, so we were at my parents' house, um, obviously she was there, um, I'm surprised we had last dating, dating that like long. like a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we got to my house, and, you know, we had a tree house in, like, the backyard, mm-hmm. and there was, like, a pulley system, and one of the kids from middle school, so um, cool. Shamat, what's up, dude, um, he was up in the tree house like messing with the pulley thing mm-hmm. and i was like dude you're gonna like pull it out of the tree and there was a bucket on the bottom of it so i like put my foot over the bucket and he yanked it and it jumped the pulley like this big metal like weighed probably 10 pound pulley oh, off of the hook that it was that was hooked onto in the tree and it fell straight down and skipped across both my knees at, oh. at my birthday party and it was like, it was the blinding kind of pain oh, that like, like you want to pass Stop. out. I can't even talk about it. And That's so I was like, awful. I was crippled on the ground for like 30 seconds maybe. And I was like, oh. holy crap, like I might've just shattered both of my kneecaps. <laughs> um, luckily I was in middle school and, and uh, image and nervousness about what people thought of you was like top of mind. Yeah. So I like popped right back up. And immediately was like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm so good. And then went down to like shoot some hoops or whatever, like in the little courtyard yeah, that we yeah. have. And and I was down there and I was like, holy crap, my knees <laughs> hurt so bad. Also got accused by my parents that I snuck with Helen into the front yard and had some extra smooches, um, which was not true. I I had I I did not kiss that lovely girl. <laughs> That night. I didn't kiss her on my birthday. I believe you. Thank you. You can kiss me on my birthday. I I will kiss you more on your birthday. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we are coming kind of close to the end here. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank you for tuning in um, and hearing some of our birthday stories, some of our expectations, as well as just some We're of our... We're having a birthday party next week. Yes, We're we are. We're excited about that. Very excited about that. So um, if you're coming to the birthday party, we'll look forward to seeing you there. Yep. Um, otherwise, um, thanks for tuning in to the Man Card Podcast. We look forward to seeing you on Friday. One last thing. One last thing. I love sharing my birthday month with you. I love having my birthday month with you too. Best. Best. Babies. Babies. <laughs> ever. Ever. <laughs> Mancardpodcast.com, YouTube, Mancard Podcast, and Mancardpod at gmail.com. Go check it out. We look forward to hearing from you soon, and we'll see you on Friday. <laughs>